So here we are in PowerPoint. We looked at add-ins last time, and we're going to click to insert an add-in. And it's one that we talked about recently, it is the Pro Word Cloud. And once you open it, you see what the options and limitations are. You have a variety of fonts that you can choose from. You have a variety of color schemes to choose from. You also can choose whether you'd prefer the layout to be completely horizontal, completely vertical, half and half, or kind of anywhere in between, or completely random. By default, the maximum number of words is 100, but you can change that, and you can also change the size. And you can decide whether or not you want common words like in the and in to be included. So you can go ahead and click Create Word Cloud and see what it comes up with. But you get to select which text to include. So if I just wanted to stop here, I could, or I can choose everything on this slide. And that's what it came up with initially. If you like that, go ahead and save it. If not, you can regenerate and see what it comes up with next. Now that you've seen what Higgly Piggly does, if you decide that now I really want something more 90 degree, and if you decide I don't really like that color scheme either, then once again, reset. So when you find one that you do like, you can save that to a gallery, but this is, like all add-ins, a separate tool, so you need to create an account there to do that. If you just want to right-click, on the actual cloud. Uh, the directions say you can right click on it, but I find that right clicking doesn't do anything for me. I can just click and drag it onto my slide. And when I do, because it is a graphic object on my screen, Design Ideas also pops open. So I can now choose to make this the background to my slide with the text in front of it. And I can have it as, a, as the focus of my page. So this is what I like to call AI app smashing. It used AI to design the Pro Word Cloud in the first place. And now that I put it on my page, AI design ideas are popping up, giving me different options for how I can display this on my slide. Don't like the ones that are showing? Click Get More Ideas, and it will generate more for you. You can also click to preview in Design Ideas and adjust them as well. So as far as you can tell, I took my existing slideshow and I used the Pro Word Cloud to create a Word Cloud based on a presentation I already had. But I could have just as well opened a slideshow with just one slide, copied my text in it onto that slide, and then used the Pro Word Cloud just to make the Word Cloud. Once I've made my Word Cloud, I can even get rid of my original text. Right-click on the Word Cloud and either copy it or save it as a picture to use elsewhere. So the Word Cloud tool within PowerPoint can be used exactly that way, within PowerPoint, to leave it in the PowerPoint. Or this is one of the tools in PowerPoint that you can use just for the tool to create something that you're going to use outside of PowerPoint. And during this course, we're going to see a lot of tools like that, where we're just kind of using PowerPoint for the special tools that it has, not to create a slideshow presentation, but just to create something in a slide that I can then save and bring it outside of PowerPoint and use it somewhere else. In the last session, when we were looking at add-ins online, notice I had my book cover on here. I did not design a book cover so that you could see it in PowerPoint. I used the tools in PowerPoint to design my book cover. Again, the formatting's off a little bit on the online version. If I open this on the desktop version, everything will be in the right place. But because PowerPoint has some, so many easy to use graphic design tools in here, a novice like me was able to create a halfway decent cover just using PowerPoint without having to learn some fancy graphic design software. And so that's one way that you can use the Word Cloud, although you're certainly welcome to go ahead and leave it in PowerPoint as part of one of your slides in your slideshow. Thank you for watching. Down below, you can find a link to subscribe to my channel, as well as links to my Using Microsoft Teams for Remote Learning course, and a link to my book, Using Microsoft Tools in the Classroom.